What's up guys, Nick Smith here, and today I'm going to teach you how to dodge and burn. Now the reason I wanted to cover dodging and burning as the first topic on my channel is this is the one thing that I wish I would have learned sooner, because I feel the quality of my work increased dramatically once I learned how to do this. So to start, we're going to create a new layer, and we're going to do that by hitting Control, Alt, Shift, N on the keyboard. If you're on a Mac, it's going to be Command, Option, Shift, N, but it works exactly the same way. Next, we're going to hit Shift, F5 to bring up the Fill dialog. Contents will probably be on foreground color, but you're going to switch it to 50% gray and then hit OK. Next, we're going to go here to the blending mode and we're going to select soft light. Now we're going to duplicate the layer by hitting Control J, and then we're going to double click on the text and rename the top layer Dodge. And do the same for the bottom layer and rename that one Burn. Now from here we're going to hold down control and click the second layer and then hit control G to make a group. And we're just going to rename this one dodge and burn. So from here we're going to expand this by clicking that little arrow. And we're going to go back to our background layer, select that, and then open up the adjustments panel and hit uh, black and white. So the reason we want to do black and white is because it makes it so it's easier to see where your darks and lights actually are. And when you're on color, it's not as easy to kind of tell what's darker, what's lighter. And it makes dodging and burning a little more difficult. This puts it in a little more of an abstract way to where it's really easy to do. So next we're going to select our burn layer. We're going to hit B to bring up our brush. And then flow should be set at 100% to begin with, but we're going to hit Shift 1 to set it down to 10. Usually I set this range somewhere between 3 and 10% depending on what I'm working on. But for this example, I want to do it at a heavier flow so you can actually see it a bit better. And then I'll just dial the opacity of the group down later to show you more, you know, the different levels of what you can do with it. So we're going to go ahead and zoom in here. And we're going to hit D to make sure our brush is on the default colors. I accidentally popped up the 3D menu, but um, your brush swatches should be on default here. And then we're going to just kind of paint wherever we see dark areas with black and then we're going to paint wherever we see what light areas with the white brush so I'm gonna go ahead and burn wherever I see like a really nice dark area like this and like I said I this is a little heavier than I would normally do it normally I would not do this at like 10% but I'm really trying to make it visible what I'm doing so you guys can see a little better we're just gonna Kind of go over these shadow areas. Actually, did I already go over that? No, I didn't. All right, just making sure I didn't already go over that area. I'm going to undo that and just kind of paint that a little better because it's a little sloppy on the nose there. Okay, so next we're going to switch to the dodge layer. If we toggle this real quick, we can see what we've already burned. But we're going to switch to the dodge layer now. I'm going to just kind of paint wherever there's highlights now. And the reason I like to do burning first is it makes the highlights pop more and makes it easier to actually see where you're going to do it. If you don't like the way something looks, like I didn't like the way that spot on the cheek looks, just hit Control Z or Control Alt Z and it'll step back one step. So then you can just kind of redo that area you just painted on. I'm put a little highlight here. Okay, so I'm basically done with my dodge and burn already. So I'm going to toggle the layer on and off, and you can see the dramatic difference that I make. Like I said, this is way stronger than I would usually go, but you kind of see how it gives it that 3D pop to it. So I'm going to turn off the black and white layer now so we can see this in color and see the difference it's actually making. So like I said before, that's much heavier than I would usually go. So what I want to do is I want to just select this group here, and then I want to dial the opacity down until it looks good. So we go all the way to the right, that's at nothing. And we just kind of like slowly increase, we can see where it goes with the different levels of opacity. Or you can of course just type it in, so like 10, 20. Let's go ahead and increase in large amounts, 40, 60, 80, and then of course 100. I like the way it looked at about 60, so we'll do that. So then you can just toggle it on and off like that. Make sure you like what you see. If you want to make any adjustments to it, what you can also do is you can hold down Alt and click this little eye here. And that'll make it so you only see where you've dodged. Because it's on soft light, you're not going to see anything underneath of it. Um, it's just going to look like this. So th those are the areas you've dodged at. And if we do the same for burn, 
you can see only the areas you burned. And if you put both on, you can see the areas you've done both. So it's really an easy technique, and it's really fast and simple, and I think it will help you guys dramatically in just making your images stand out more. If this video helped you out, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. That way more people can find my content and learn from me as well. If you use this in your own images and want me to see, use the hashtag NickSmithTutorials on Instagram and I'll take a look at your work. Thanks for tuning in guys, I'll see you next time.